Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Off the Donut. Today we're joined uh, with Cozy Ann. You can say hi if you want. Hello. Cozy Ann is a DIY emo bedroom pop artist based out of Las Vegas. Crafting these almost perfect amalgamations of pop rhythms, bit crush, and vulnerabilities. Their EP Pluto Pop, Pluto Pop, excuse me, was released last November 2021 on all streaming platforms. And you can buy it on tape, CD, or vinyl at cozyn.card.co forward slash colon merch or pound merch. How are you doing today? Um, doing pretty good. Uh, just been a very slow day. That's all. Mm, that's good. So we always we always start off with the Bev and Snack Check. I have my water as always. I changed it up a little bit and I have half a bowl of uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Nice. So you'll get to hear some of that. <laughs> uh, I, I just have an apple and water. I haven't eaten lunch. I haven't eaten lunch yet. So I'm like, mm-hmm. going to have some afterwards. So I just want something small. Cool. Yeah, you're going to hear that crunch too. <laughs> um, so uh, my first question, artist, is always where their name comes from. So how did Cozy and come about? Uh, it's, it's a bit of a long winded story. Um, so okay. for some context, uh, I started trying, like thinking about writing my own songs sometime early 2019, but okay. really actually started making uh, my own songs in late 2019. Um, I think for about a year and four months, I, uh, I just kept up with that same artist name, just mindlessly releasing songs as I finished them. Mm-hmm. And sometime around early 2021, I realized that my music was going nowhere. It was going nowhere at all. I wasn't performing live, uh, selling uh, merch, anything like that. So I just decided to take down everything and start on a fresh note. Hmm. And I think the reason I did that was because I had no goals for my music. I was just making songs, which mm-hmm. is really bad. Uh, so once I start this artist name, I decided, okay, I need, I need a goal. I need a set idea for where I should start with uh, mm. Cozy In. And while I was trying to think of that uh, goal, something that kept appearing in my mind was a place for like comfort, a place for being welcome somewhere, uh, no matter what, which is yeah. the vibe I get from a lot of my favorite artists. Uh, and while I was thinking about that goal and stuff, I was consistently thinking about a place I used to stay at a few years ago, like a hotel called Comfort mm-hmm. Bin. Okay. And I was thinking, how can I combine those two ideas? Because typically whenever I describe like a comfortable place, I always stay cozy and comfortable. So I just threw the two together mm-hmm. and came up with the artist named Cozy In. Very cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's very long-winded and a bunch of stuff went to it, but I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I think I think that makes it uh, more meaningful, obviously, to you, but also just in general. Um, yeah. Very cool. So one, th- one thing that struck me while listening to the EP on Bandcamp specifically is that each verse or lyrical section, you also have um, the names of the chords that are being played behind them. Um, yeah. And, you know, while an artist putting out the way to play their songs definitely isn't unheard of and is usually celebrated by their listeners for the convenience and accessibility. It also isn't uh, exactly immediately common, much less in the initial release of the project. So why, why did you decide to include them? Uh, When I was first really getting into music, I was a huge fan. Like when I was first getting to make my own songs in 2020 and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, I was a huge fan of Cape Town. Uh, okay he's yeah one of my biggest <laughs> inspirations. yeah he does a lot of covers and stuff and mm-hmm. something he would do with a lot of his releases is like add chords so he could encourage uh covers and stuff like that mm-hmm. um i guess i want to do the same thing to show my appreciation to people listening because like i never understood it whenever an artist would be like huge or something or like have a ton of releases out but never acknowledge their fans at least get yeah. some sort of appreciation. So I definitely want to do more in that aspect. Uh, but the least I could have done was just share the chords as a way of saying, hey, you can do a cover if you like. You can do your own rendition of the songs. I don't mind it. I support it. Stuff like that. Very cool. It's very thoughtful. Yeah. And I, it's kind of funny that it comes from Cape Town, too. I used to watch them a lot when I was like in middle school and high school and everything. So that's cool. Yeah. 
he's one of my biggest inspirations. Um, I actually start learning guitar because of him. Mm. Yeah, they're very sweet. Yeah. So um, most of the EP has um, sort of like a, a darker, more more vulnerable lyrics laid over these super happy sounding, so it's like synth pop dynamic to it. Um, yeah. uh, the easiest example is just hate, um, which you know adds layers to what could be appreciated from the songs. When you were writing the EP, did the lyrics usually come hand in hand with the instrumentals? Was one typically done before the other or did it kind of change throughout the process? My writing process is very weird. Um, with Pluto Pop, I know my main goal was to write the chords, like the instrumental and the lyrics at the same time so they could go mm -hmm. hand in hand and work together. But sometimes they get really carried away and just like make an entire track instrumental wise mm -hmm. uh, before I do lyrics, um, which hate was one of those examples. I went carried away after listening to Shy Away by 21 Pilots for the first time. Cause mm -hmm. I wanted to write a song sort of like that. And I completely forgot about writing lyrics to the track. So <laughs> for the most, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so for the most part, it was just me writing a, a chord progression or me writing down a line or two and then building mm -hmm. a track, the instrumental and lyrics based off of that. But sometimes I might do one first. Sometimes I might do the other. It's like a case by case basis. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, sometimes you get, like you said, carried away. You're kind of just in the zone. It's if anything, it's more of a hindrance to kind of step away from it than continuing to go. So that's that makes sense. Yeah, more of like a short burst of energy musician over like a long-winded one. Yeah, yeah. What um what were some of your musical inspirations for the project? Out, you know, you mentioned Cave Town, obviously, but yeah. some of the others. Um, I've been taking a lot of inspiration from numerous different artists for this new album I'm making and future projects, but mm -hmm. for Pluto Pop, I just boiled it down to three specific artists, which were. 21 Pilots, Cave Town, and 100 Gex. I wanted to see if I could somehow <laughs> like... <laughs> That's one hell of a combination. <laughs> uh, this is the randomest mess of sounds and seeing if I could blend it together into one unique project. Hmm. So it was like a well, struggle I... of like, how can I combine bedroom pop with alternative pop and hyper pop and stuff like that? Hmm. Well, I think it turned out well. It's cool. Yeah. Who, um, what about for just overall in general or for those other uh, projects you're working on? I listen to a lot of new artists very often. So my primary inspirations change often, but mm -hmm. I've been looking towards a lot of 90s rock uh, for inspiration. So I think the biggest artists who are inspiring my current sound right now is Nirvana, Green Day, Weezer, artists like that. And mm. a bit of car seat headrest. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, when you you said '90s rock, I was kind of expecting Nirvana to <laughs> be there. <laughs> I feel like usually that tends to get thrown in the mix. Um, yeah, they're very cool. influential and inspirational. Yeah, it's uh, I um. You know, I, I obviously everyone's like, well, okay, well they're Nirvana, you know, but like, but you know, they are so. It's they uh they did a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, there are, are a lot of um a lot of unanswered questions in the lyrics throughout the EP. Uh, they're at a minimum pretty much uh, three or four per song. The one with the with the least is Euphoric Dreams, with which has one question, which is, "Are you upset that you can't fall in love?" But this also makes sense because the song that song generally takes a little bit more of a direct approach to the subject matter, understanding it and explaining it. For the rest of the EP, why do you think so much is asked? Why do you think so much of it seems unanswered, even if it was answered, at least in the lyrics? And uh, have any others, have any of the other questions been answered since you've written it? That is a very good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of it is asked just because, like, when I was writing Pluto Pop, I just wanted to get out a lot of things that were like, I was just confused about on my mind because I was very confused about a lot of things around the time. So mm -hmm. I would just keep throwing in questions I was confused about. And I know I wouldn't have gone to answer likely because I am a very self-dependent person. I do not like rely on other people for help because I just feel bad for it. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So I'll just try to like ask myself these questions. And I guess it sort of just bled its way into the songs. Uh, mm. In terms of why so much of it seems unanswered, like I said, um, I just don't like asking people questions and asking uh, for help with anything. I just do everything myself and see if I can answer everything myself. And I, it's been very weird realizing I do not have the answers to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, a lot of it went unanswered. Um, mm. I will say in the like eight months, seven months since Pluto Pop has been released, a lot of the questions uh, I've been confused about have been answered. Uh, specifically with Hear Me Now, Euphoric Dreams, and Nosebleeds, I can confidently answer a lot of the questions I asked in those tracks when I was first writing them around like summer of last year. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I think also if, if those are the questions that you were focused on at the time, sometimes it's it's easier or, or it makes more sense to just kind of let that question fester even if it isn't answered. So that makes sense. Um, again, with, with the idea of those unanswered questions, but also just lyrical matter overall, there's a lot of inner turmoil over a range of subjects. Um, there's feelings of dysphoria, worthlessness, suicidal thoughts, depression, nihilism, and just generally being overwhelmed. Um, did writing any, any of these songs help you to cope with these issues? Is it more of a form of uh, making physical your vulnerability something to understand and grasp or simply just a way to write? Um, it's, it's, it's a bit weird, uh, trying to explain it. Pluto pop is just weird in general. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like in a sense, Pluto pop wasn't exactly like a way to cope with anything in a sense. If it was like, it's more of trying to help other people cope with things. Um, okay. I feel like it represents two things. It was sort of me just like seeing what I was going through uh, possibly around the time, what my friends were possibly going through, but people just in general going through and see if I can just turn that into a project saying, okay, these are some issues. These are issues we can acknowledge. And now we can just move on and do something else and just grow from that period, um, which has been happening a lot. Uh, I've been working on my first album, my first official album for a few months now. And none of the tracks deal with any concepts from Pluto Pop, or at least like if they do, it's on a very minimal scale. Mm. Uh, so it's a bit more like hard and stuff. So I guess without Pluto Pop, uh, that wouldn't have happened. So I guess it was just a matter of trying to put all of those ideas into like a physical form and vulnerability. Uh, in a way though, it did not help at all because trying to write it was quite destructive in a sense. Like, mm. it wasn't the, sa the fact it was bad or anything, but it was like, I was pretty tired and drained uh, before I started writing it. And afterwards, I just didn't want to do anything music related. It just made everything feel worse. Mm. So I just, just had to take some time away and just fully process it. Yeah, yeah, it's it can be hard to kind of ride that line in between acknowledging it and wanting to, um, address just it being there and also by having to think about it so much of it yeah. again beginning to overwhelm you huh. because i think pluto pop was like it took me like just about a year to fully conceive and make it so having mm -hmm. to think about a lot of the concepts in that project for a year all of it just in within five tracks was very draining and just it sucked yeah a lot of a lot of concentration in the one point yeah well, it's good that it's, as you said, it's it's begun to get better or, or has been getting better and that you've been finding closure with it throughout that past yeah. it. It's kind of like that bridge, like you said, that you need. Um, so uh, Hear Me Now and just the EP itself ends on the phrase, you should have heard me today. You should have seen me going astray. Who am I supposed to portray? After all we've just talked about, I'm going to throw that question back at you. Who are you supposed to portray? Do you really have to portray anyone or anything in particular? And do you want to change that, both whether one is supposed to portray anything or what you feel you portray specifically? 
I said portray a lot there. So, you know, <laughs> take it as it is. Um, I wrote that song when I was very confused about a lot of things at the time. Uh, and in the months since, I've realized I'm supposed to portray nobody except me. I'm not supposed to play a character or anything. Um, okay. I feel like with that song, it was just a matter of like, not in like trying to write a song about a cr- identity crisis or anything, but just like being confused about who you are and stuff like that. And over time, I've just realized like that doesn't really have to matter in the grand scheme of things if you can just try and be yourself in a sense. Hmm. Not like in a corny way, like people say, but just like genuinely <laughs> just <laughs> just doing whatever you want. Like nothing really matters. Just do what you want. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit of a weird lesson to fully understand, especially since I wrote entire song about how I don't understand that. <laughs> Uh, I feel like no one should honestly have to portray anyone they're not either and like you you can do that if you want uh, but I value authenticity in a sense a lot in my work Um, Mm. so like at worst I probably do like a persona uh, for future projects or anything like that Um, but just going back to original question I don't I've just realized I don't have to really portray anyone except myself and who I want to be. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think um, also just getting like trapped up in that itself can be also an issue and, and trying too hard, you know. It's, yeah. it's easier to just not think about it. And, and I, it's less exhausting, <laughs> to, to oh, be honest. Very. very cool. So those, those are all the questions that I have for you. Um, this is your time to plug any social media, any other links or stuff that you have, um, any other news of stuff you're working on in the future. You've dropped a couple of times that you're working on an album right now. So Yeah. Um, well, first, I'm available on pretty much all social media and platforms under Cozian or Cozian underscore. Uh, in terms of future projects, I am super excited to show you guys uh, what I've been working on because I've been working on about like a 12, 13 track album for a few months and it's turning out really good. It's like an expansion of the sound of Pluto Pop, but with a more melancholic and upbeat lyricism in a sense. Mm. Outside of that, uh, I've been writing a lot of songs with my friend Alex and we plan to release three songs this summer. And I've been working on a small like compilation of demos and I plan to release that within the next few months too. So a lot of stuff is coming this year, hopefully. I'm very excited to share it. Very cool. Yeah, that'll be nice. Um, and, and as you mentioned, you guys can find all that stuff. Uh, all the ads and social media and stuff will be on the screen as well as, as linked in the description there. So you can go check out all that fun stuff um again pluto pop is on basically everything it's on Bandcamp, all that fun stuff so go check it out um otherwise thank you for watching thank you for being with me um and yeah we'll see you in the next one thank you for having me here for sure